last thing visualizing the DNA now the visualizing is important because we need to be able to say which str is which okay so we can look at the bands but it's not really telling us a lot of information visualizing the bands and so what we do here is use a technique called probing we probe the dna to find out where our sequence that we are interested in is because if I, if I want to compare the sequence GATA, I want to know, does person A and person B, do they have the same number of GATA repeats, or do they have a different number of G, GATA repeats? Now, I've got these bands on my gel. Now, if GATA is in this sequence, then they're going to be the same. But if GATA is in this sequence, these two people might be different. So how do I know which of these bands corresponds to my GATASTR sequence? And so what I do is I use what is called a synthetic probe. And the probe is a synthetic nucleotide which has a complementary sequence to the sequence that I'm looking for. So I would make a molecule in my lab that had the sequence C, T, A, T complementary to that one and to that molecule I would attach a fluorophore that is emitting a fluorescent signal okay. so let's say it's, it gives off a purple signal whenever I excite it with UV light okay so what I do is I flood my membrane or gel, if I've transferred it over to a membrane or on the gel, I, I flood my membrane, let's just say, I flood the membrane with many molecules of this probe. And what will happen is that the probe will start to concentrate where it's found its complementary sequence. Okay, so if the probe starts to concentrate here, I will start to get a, if I'm exciting the membrane with a UV signal, I will start to see a purple signal from these bands. Will I be able to see these bands? No, because I'm not probing for them. So I'm getting a signal. And so what I will be able to tell is that actually person A has got more GATA repeats than person B. Okay? Now, one, one STR position is not usually a good indicator of being unique. Yeah? So, I can compare this STR in two different people, and they could be different, but they could equally be the same. Yeah? So if I compared, so let's say there was a different one, and this one was C, T, A, C, T, C, T, okay? And then I make a probe that was uh, G, A, G, A, and then I stick a different color fluorophore on this one so this one's going to give me a red signal whenever this probe finds its sequence CTCT it's going to give me a red signal and and then I get this from that so when I put the this probe onto the membrane then I get a signal that's showing me that actually they're the same for CTCT Okay, now why it's important to check a number of different positions is if I had not done that comparison, if I only based my whole experiment of profiling on the CTCT -CT sequence, the, the genetic profile would tell me that these people are identical because they've got the same number of STR repeats. 
But because I do CTCT and another sequence, it's telling me that actually, though they're the same for this one, they're different for this one. And so these two individuals are not the same person. But it took me to, com to compare more than one site in order to find that information out. So the more sites you compare, the more of a unique profile you can create. Okay, and that is genetic profiling. And scene, okay.